Now in this video we're going to be talking about the blood vials from the sets of Onoshima Easter Egg. This could be a fairly new concept to you or this could be something which you've known about for weeks now. It's an integral part of the storyline and in this video we're going to be covering all the bases here. We're going to be talking about every single person that this blood vials could belong to as well as the implications of it and looking at this ending as it is definitely going to affect the future of the zombie story. A few weeks back I made a video talking about my ideas of the ending cutscene explaining and talking about the blood vials in a little bit of detail basically explain the ending of that cutscene and the blood vials and who exactly they could be and I narrowed it down to be the blood from their 1.0 versions from another universe. I based that conclusion on the line where Rick Toffin calls it our insurance policy and looking really at what the definition of that is but in this video we're going to go deep and look at every possible meaning of this ending what the blood vials could mean so sit down relax this is going to be a long but pretty awesome video. So to get started let's look back again at the end of the cutscene so we know exactly what the dialogue is and what we're working with. Three down, one to go. Guess it's you next, Nikolai. I know. There is something else we must do. There is a chain of events that must be set in motion. Okay, gotta admit, I didn't see that one coming. Call it our insurance policy, in case we don't like where we end up. Now before we even start breaking down the dialogue and all the ideas here, we need to look at the main concept of what's happening in this cutscene. We've just collected Takio 1.0 Soul in the summoning key, the screen goes white and then a few seconds later we see a rift portal. During that white screen and the rift portal, our crew teleported somewhere in the universe at a specific time and place to do a certain action. The duration of how long they were in a different universe is unknown. They could have been there for years, if not months, days, hours, it all went by in literally a second. Our characters return, we have the dialogue, and now Takio, Nikolai, and Dempsey all possess a pair of blood vials each. Now focusing on the length of time and where they went is just as important as the actual quotes in this specific section of the cutscene. Now here is a clip from Jason Blundell back at the end of March talking about how important it is for our characters to be going off between the Maps, as well as the actions taking place on the map themselves. It's, it's interesting that our characters seemingly have just appeared on this new location, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That you, we started out, we just finished this map, Richtofen kind of states at the end that he knows where we're going. Yep. So since, since what point was, were they going to the boat and how exactly did they, did they get there? And yeah. is that an important question, or is that just... I, I used to have an art teacher who used to say that the gaps between the artwork are just as important as the detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that applies in terms of how our maps work. Right. There, is, there is blocks of time which the community don't see, mm -hmm. um, and that's important to set up certain themes. Right. Um, and those blocks may or may not be answered in other uh, techniques right, as, the, right. as they go along in the maps. But... Um, Yes, the, where, we, where we choose to start an experience and where we choose to end an experience uh, is integral. And, you know, even when you end as well, sometimes, you know, sometimes people look and say, okay, there's the main Easter egg, right. that's the end of the experience. Right, right. Not always is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's other things to look for past that experience. Now, when that example Jason gave, this was before Zetsubo no Shima dropped, so we had no idea at the time what he was talking about. But he did say that there's certain chunks of time that they don't show as it is kind of building blocks for the future of the story. And that's exactly what we've got in here. And it's probably one of the most prominent times. And him saying to look past the main Easter egg being completed is pretty much a hint towards DLC 2 and the blood vials. So wherever they did just teleport to, Richtofen calls it their insurance policy. Whatever they just did, he called it an insurance policy. And it's important because he's just calling it the insurance policy. 
obviously. This isn't exactly what it is. It just could be wording from Richthofen's end, which is sort of making it sound less exciting than it actually is, or it could be downplaying it and it's actually really grand and really, really exciting. Now, what exactly is an insurance policy and what exactly does it mean in Richthofen's definition? Well, the normal definition is when an insurer is paid by someone to cover a problem in case of an emergency. But that's all to do with money. This isn't really that sort of scenario. We need to look at it from the viewpoint of our characters. So it seems that our characters teleported somewhere and did something before an emergency that ensured something that would happen if things ended up going wrong. So whatever they just did, it was a countermeasure to counteract a certain situation that could happen in the future of the plan. Now, why would Richthofen need an insurance policy? He's had this set out plan for a very long time, and it seems like he knows exactly what he is doing. Well, Richthofen could have knowledge of an action in another place or dimension that could influence what happens in the future, or that this insurance policy is enough to help fix everything in case they fail their ultimate plan. Now we know by now at this point Richthofen does have an ultimate plan and in his wording he says about the insurance policy just in case we don't like where we end up. Importance on the in case. It seems quite small but it is very important and especially coming from Richthofen it's quite unusual. We know Richthofen has this elongated plan but by saying the words in case it sounds like like he's actually a little bit doubtful about where this little journey they're on is going to end up leading to. Perhaps there is multiple outcomes that Richthofen is aware of and is trying to make sure that there's one certain outcome that will be the outcome that we'll see in the final map. All we're aware of right now of the plan is collecting the souls of each of our characters. We've got Dempsey, we've got Takio, we assume we also have Richthofen and that's due to a very interesting quote from Jason Blundell in another interview, and we're going to be going for Nikolai's next. So what are we going to be doing with all of these souls? This is something we aren't sure of, but we can assume it is a ritual because it is using the summoning key, and we see a bunch of the summoning key being used with rituals in Shadows of Evil. And this leads me to my next point, which is talking about an alternative idea of who the Blood Vials could come from. And we're on the topic of Shadows of Evil and we'll speak now and hear from Jason Blundell talking about what the importance is of the summoning key and Shadows of Evil with it being what some would call a one-off map. I think the summoning key is kind of importance and how they see it and an understanding of what they're trying to do is kind of coming in mm -hmm. and we're going to see more of that in the map but um, yeah the summoning key is, um, is an integral part. So I, I, was, uh, I was talking to you a bit about this earlier but you actually mentioned something that I think the community has kind of taken for granted, and mm -hmm. that is the name itself yeah. of the summoning key. It's interesting, that, and isn't it? And I, I, was, I was wondering, what exactly would you count as being summoned yeah. so far in the series? Has there been anything... I don't think anything's been summoned so far. That, that's Because I, uh, I was thinking, obviously yeah. we've had our four characters that, yep. uh, that were kind of trapped in there throughout the events of Shadows of Evil, mm. right? Well, I mean, well, it's, um, you know, you finish Shadows of Evil and you've obviously got the Shadow Man in there right. and you've just got Dempsey in, in there. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, um, I don't think we've explored the kind of mythical ramifications right. of, of its title. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no such thing as a one-off map. So, um, and hopefully, you know, through the Reisendrak and through, you know, Zetsubo no Shima, uh, the community and followers of the storyline uh, might start to see that everything is connected. We're all connected. That's one right, of the right. thing, I suppose. But um, yeah, there is no such thing as a one-off map. Mm -hmm. And certain maps are absolutely integral to uh, the story that's being laid out right. and getting us all the way ready to, to DLC 4 mm -hmm. as well. Now this idea stems from a video that Rad Austin 27 put up a few weeks ago and it rang in my head because it is very true and the very first glimpse we ever got of Black Ops 3 Zombies was a poster of a zombie which says only the cursed survive. Looking back on it now that was obviously related to Shadows of Evil but it may play a bigger part in the overall story of our characters. The characters on Shadows of Evil were cursed by the Shadow Man, we could see that by the mark of the beast 
released on their hand, as well as the actual bio description for Shadows of Evil as well, where it clearly says they are cursed. They also have Mob of the Dead, a map set in a different universe, set with four mob gangsters who seem to be cursed in a never-ending paradox where the characters were actually dead the entire time. Both universes set our four characters to a life of just constant torture. And at some point before Origins, Rick Toffin went to Mob of the Dead and collected the blood vials from two of the inmates. This has been something that Treyarch has displayed to us since the beginning of this timeline with Origins. In the first trailer, we see Rick Toffin with those blood vials. Jumping into Black Ops 3, we have only the curse survive as the poster. These two groups here are both very much cursed. And we see Rick Toffin at the end of the Shadows of Evil Easter Egg stealing the summoning key from the Keepers. Throwing all that knowledge together, looking at the poster, it's clear that there's a good chance that the cursed blood from these survivors could play a big role in the future. Only the cursed survive. Now we only have six blood vials in total. We have two from the inmates from Mob of the Dead and then Nikolai, Takio and Dempsey carry two blood vials each which are unmarked blood vials. Now, I don't see any sense in there being the remaining Mob of the Dead characters because why would it make any sense for us to resurrect the Mob of the Dead characters in the finale? It just wouldn't make a lot of sense. But there's a good chance that the cursed blood could serve a function with the summoning key. We've been using the power of souls for quite some time now with the summoning key and the idea of using cursed blood could be no different. Using the summoning key on items associated with souls in other realms manages to bring that soul to life and using blood from a certain person or soul in a universe could perhaps bring them back to life. Now, I did mention at the start of the video that I'll be talking about pretty much any sort of scenario I can think of in my head and another idea which is relating back to the idea of the blood being from 1.0 versions of our characters or just another version of our characters is that the blood vials are there to create an infinite time loop like the Mob of the Dead characters are in, so if they do fail, they'll be able to restart this loop using the summoning key to escape the loop once the time is right. That idea fits in very well with the idea of Richtofen calling it an insurance policy. Now looking at this more realistically, it seems that Richtofen has gone through a big length in order to secure this insurance policy, so what we need to ask is what could the future hold for our characters which is causing Richtofen to go to the lengths of insuring an insurance policy. Well, we know in Origins there is an image of our four characters in what looks to be the Keeper outfits being praised like gods with the text premise, which means the first. And in Shadows of Evil, we got a cipher which basically said that premise will fail. Now we can assume that premise is a representation of our characters right now and their ultimate plan is to bring order to the universe and do what is necessary to fix all the universes. Richtofen specifically says where we end up. This is a very, very interesting quote as it leads a little bit of doubt in what's going to happen. Now, our first suggestion from the Shadows of Evil Cypher is yes, the plan could fail. Our crew could maybe fail to reach their goal. They could have died. There could have been something which slips up in their way and it just causes things to fail. They could be in a situation where it is just simply too late to change anything. They can't continue in whatever position they're in and the damage that's been caused to the universe at this point is irreversible and it's just the way that things are going to be for the rest of time. And a very unlikely suggestion, but the plan itself could fail. This is very interesting if this was the case because Richtofen sounds so concretely sure on everything happening that he thinks this isn't going to go wrong until this point in Zetsubo no Shima. It's at this point that Richtofen sees the future at such a threat that he needs to go through the lengths of traversing to another universe just to make sure that there is a insurance plan or a plan B in place. Now the main focus to look at with this ending is that it's not just simply about the blood vials because they did some very interesting things in order to get those blood vials and getting those blood vials will obviously have some consequences as well and just like Jason said there is a lot that happens in between the maps which is the building blocks for the future and stuff that happens in between the maps is just as important as what actually happens in the map. I'd love to know your thoughts on this all down below in the comment section so please
please leave any suggestions or theory ideas you have on what the blood vials could mean, who they're from, and where exactly they went during that cutscene. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on another video very, very soon. Bye!